What's going on YouTube? This is Tap Nuo, and I am a minimal techno artist from Los Angeles, a DJ, producer, audio engineer, all that good stuff. And today I wanted to talk about the importance of layering sounds, layering uh, similar sounds, layering similar instruments to create a thicker, lusher, uh, more filled out uh, type of sound. And I'm not talking about drums, I'm talking about you know lead synths, chords, pads, um, kind of string stuff like that so let me give you an example of what we will be working on today So this record is called Dash D, and it's available now on my new album, Fake Techno, so definitely go check that out. I really appreciate all the people who have been supporting my music, supporting my channel, supporting my mixes, all that stuff. So um, this is a record that I released earlier this year, and I'm really proud of it. It came out a lot differently than I was expecting, and part of the way it came out different is I actually started with this synthesizer here. So. I started with the ES2 synthesizer and I'm playing this arpeggiated pattern. And the way I came up with that pattern is I was just experimenting with different chords, um, broke it up into an arpeggiator, changed the timing of stuff and eventually changed the velocity and as well as this, a little bit of the swing to just give it a little more groove. So that pattern actually plays over and over uh, throughout the entire track. And that's the foundation that goes really well with these drums. So I'll play the drums real quick. So it has that sort of driving, uh, progressive, almost dead mousey type of sound. And the way I kept it moving, uh, again, I should note, I started like all this stuff below that was not there initially. So I started with this and the way I decided to keep it moving throughout the track was actually to play the same pattern and just add tons and tons of automation. Um, so, you know, analog, uh, glide, low pass filter, resonance, frequency modulation, all sorts of stuff. And the way I did that is I made an arrangement with the drums and I kept it playing and then I threw it into latch mode. And so that became the foundation of, you know, I was, as it progressed, I was, you know, messing with the cutoff, messing with different settings and that all got recorded into latch mode. So it has a little bit more of a live feel. Um, but there came a time where I wanted to add a breakdown and I was a little bit stuck on the breakdown. And I'm sure, you know, many producers feel the same way. You, you, you make a track, you make a groove, you make a loop of sorts, and then you know that you need to add something um, that is different than what you have. And, and that usually manifests in a breakdown. And so I didn't want to just go even crazier with the automation on the breakdown. I wanted to actually play off of those chords that were playing on the ARP and, and make something around that. So. The way that I did that is I started with, I actually didn't start with this uh, video game sound. I started with these main chords here and let's go ahead and play those. Now, see, sometimes that's weird in logic and, and let me know in the comments if you ever feel this way. Like if you play kind of certain sections, it won't always play the full chord. So let's try and see if it'll get it. There we go. So these chords here are coming from Alchemy. Uh, which in the past I was very hesitant to use, but I've learned to love this instrument and it's the sister and string setting um, pretty much stock. I've, I've changed, if I remember, I think I changed like a couple of the settings and, and there's some automation as well. Um, but for the most part, I just kept it how it is because I like it, it occupied the frequency spectrum that I needed and it, it, it served the purpose that I needed. So I just EQ'd off a little bit 
of the low end and then also some side chain. Um, and I should note too, for this track, um, for the drums, the synths, all that stuff, I didn't really mix it too much, um, partially because when I was actually producing it, I was trying to think about the mix when I'm actually selecting an instrument, um, selecting, you know, the, the, I guess, tonality of the instrument. So I'm trying to get things that are gonna work from the jump, not have to go back and make a ton of corrections. And when you're layering sounds, that's very important. Uh, you don't want to have to go back and, and you know, EQ a bunch of stuff or, or do all kinds of crazy surgical edits on stuff. Like it, it should, in theory, be ready to go from when you select that instrument, if that makes sense. So this, this main chords, I, I liked how it sounded, but it was still a little thin. So I wanted to add some more layers to it. And the way that I did that was just with strings, um, those which are also coming from Alchemy. And I should also note that these chords, so they start out pretty simple, um, not even as chords, and then they eventually turn into chords. And then they kind of play along with the breakdown. Um, and so this took a lot of experimentation. I think I was on like my ninth revision of the track by the time I decided to call it a day and, and, and begin the mixing process. Um, and a lot of that is just listening back, you know, trying different settings, trying different notes and, and listening back over and over and trying to listen back with an objective perspective and, and not get so fixated on how it looks, um, focus on how it sounds. So when I was doing that, I, I realized that these, these chords on their own were not going to be strong enough. So they needed some layers. And I should note, I also called this layer one, do not delete, because I was trying so many different things. I have all these hidden tracks of different alternative synths. So I settled on this one and, and just said, do not delete so that I could remember to keep it. Um, so I'll play that. So without this, right, it's a lot thinner. So that occupied a little bit more of the mid range that I needed. Um, but it still needed a little bit more. So I added another alchemy layer with just some different settings. Um, again, just very simple EQ, just, just for taste. Um, and that's playing like so. So again, fills out a little more of the, the low, not low, but like low mid section. And then that needed something to, to fill out the top, like higher frequencies. So I added these Oz, which are coming from Alchemy again, um, just one of the, another one of the settings. And I was cycling through different settings to really try and find something that works. And if you look on the mixer, like this stuff is playing pretty low and that's because it's it's the type of thing where I've I started at a really low volume and then was just bringing it up and and trying you know full volume and then finding that halfway kind of sweet spot between too loud and too quiet um oh shit what did I just do so um you know it's it's a lot of experimentation of like find a main chord that things can sit around and then you know layer in volume and, and see you know what the right setting is for volume that can complement it because i think a lot of producers overthink things and they think they need to have all these plugins but if you're gain staging things that is going to be so much more powerful than like having it wrong and then going back and making so many corrections because it's going to start to affect how it sounds um so yeah, just some food for thought. I just, um, I didn't really have a super clear direction for this video. I just wanted to talk about like the importance of layering sounds and the um, importance of having sounds that can play off of an existing, you know, sort of uh, bedrock or, or anchor type of sound. In in that case is this lead synth. And so like, if I play those all together, you'll see that the lead synth is occupying a little bit more of the bass
Right. So like if I take it out, it definitely thins out a lot. And um, you want to have stuff like if you're using a lot of chords, if you're doing a lot of progressive techno, um, progressive house, you want all of those melodic elements or anything that's not drums to, in theory, if you mute the drums and there's nothing rhythmic playing, it should hold up on its own. Um, it should essentially be able to like, you could in theory release it as like a stem, you know, or like a tool. Um, so the way that you'll know that your your layered sounds are, are jiving together is if you mute the drums and they still sound like really full and they still drive, you're onto something. Um, because that way, when it comes for the when it comes time for the drums to actually come back in, it's like it's like the icing on the cake, and it's 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 like rewarding for the listener um, because they that the lack of drums it kind of signals you know tension signals something's coming, and then when the drums come in, because that stuff already works on its own, it's like it's like a relief almost for the listener, um, and you know it's it's the kind of thing where. Maybe maybe for certain tracks, you have only two layered sounds. Um, some tracks, such as this one, that are a little more, I guess, quote unquote, grand, um, you, can, you can layer a little more. I personally would not recommend to layer, you know, you don't need like 35 layers. Um, you wanna find that sweet spot of like, if you mute it, do you notice that there's a significant difference? Um, and that's kind of a good approach is to go through and mute things and, and strip it back to the point where what's essential. Um, so that's, I guess, if you take away anything from this video, it's, it's think about when you're layering sounds, how can you do it in an essential way and not in a way that is just layering for the sake of like, oh yeah, I have 75 tracks in my project. Like, to be honest, listeners don't, care how it how the project looks listeners don't even um they're not that's not on their mind like when they're on the dance floor and i'm sure you know producers who go out to events and listen to music they're they're not thinking like oh i wonder if this track has you know a hundred tracks in it or or 75 or or even 50 like it's does it sound good does it sound full uh does it drive and you know, does it work on the dance floor and does it work in a DJ mix? And so that's just something to keep in mind for uh, both minimal techno and, and pretty much all kinds of music. So if you enjoy my videos, leave a comment, uh, subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, and I will see you guys next week. Thank you so much.